mother-child dynamic. Um, in the first hour of this, we talk specifically about the dynamics between the mother and the daughter, um, how the mother can have positive and negative impacts on her relationship with her daughter, and in some ways we can cultivate healthier relationships um, with our mothers and or our daughters. So now we're going to move the conversation into the impact that mothers can have on their sons. <laughs> ah! Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. dun. <laughs> And mothers do have a significant impact on their sons. Significant. Significant. To the extent. Huge. That the way they behave in their later years is attributed mm -hmm. to their relationships with their mothers. Yes. 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 So um, let's just get right into it. Shaping him to be her ideal man. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um. You know, in a positive way, this is good, right? Yes. Because if you foster the development of a boy's personality and love him for what he is and who he is, and you don't attempt to change him, mm -hmm. um, and you're not loving him for his attempts um, to be who he thinks you want him to be, That's then he becomes the, uh, I'll put in quotes, ideal man, right? He learns how to have healthy relationships moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's healthy when... <laughs> because mm, a lot of y'all going to need to hear this. A lot of y'all are mothers to sons. Healthy when they allow their sons to love and mix with girls early and women later in life without giving signs ding, 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 mm -hmm. of disappointment or making their sons feel like they are portraying, betraying, portraying, but what the hell is wrong with me today? <laughs> Betraying the mother-son connection. That, that part is like should be in flashing lights that part but yes because there's an element that some some people that are in the male species cannot wrap their head around no Past these are the really mama's boys yes that these are betraying. the mama's boys yes yes um and a natural and this is you know and we're only speaking from just the perspective of what we our research Mm -hmm. And our own personal interactions with some of your sons, <laughs> your, <laughs> some of your dusty ass <laughs> through our life. This is our through, through our, our continuum, the continuum right. of life. <laughs> right, through our lives, not yes. now. Through our lives, through our lives. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and a natural a normal mother-son relationship makes room for the fact that the son may choose someone very different mm -hmm. from mom without her feeling devalued or dejected. And yes. I think that that's an issue. I think sometimes moms want their sons mm -hmm. to pick women that are like them. Yes. And a lot of times the son picks <laughs> Completely opposite. <laughs> Completely opposite, right? And the mother um, feels like... Betrayed in some yes, way. Yes, like, slap in the <gasps> face. And okay. we shouldn't be that way because mm -hmm. clearly, like, let your son love who he wants to love. You raised him to make, be able to make choices yes and that's a beautiful thing it's a wonderful thing that he has a mind of his own hello good morning um the role they take in family life as adults yes mothers mm. impact that i know you yes. think if it's a father's impact and i'm not saying that fathers don't impact the sons in this way but just hear me out with this it's hugely positive. The impact is hugely positive if the mother offers her son a realistic experience of family life growing up so that he will later be able to create one as an adult. Nur nurturing, it's nurturing. The impact can be nurturing when she encourages, when the mother encourages curiosity about the feelings and experiences of others so that he develops an appropriate sensibility for emotional intimacy. Because remember, emotional intimacy comes from the mother mm. it's the same for the daughter and now it's the same for the son hello so if the mother isn't exhibiting positive ways to exhibit emotional intimacy she's going to stunt the daughter and she's going to stunt the son come on a warning lady mm. just saying yes just that should be part of uh -oh, mothering sorry 101 it should I don't know if y'all heard that. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't hear that? Sorry, somebody was calling me. 
Uh, somebody, somebody was calling me. I had to put the do not disturb on. Sorry, no. and it just messed my whole flow up. So continue. No. I warning labels. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry about that. That's all cool. I think you know. I think it's something that because it's this is not taught. This is something people with life you figure out. But as we learn and understand, it's an awareness that should be brought to the forefront of just making people know, like, coffee wakes you up. You also right. need to know that how you you engage with folks emotionally can stem from your relationship with your mother figure. Yes. Or a yes. mother figure. Yes. Now, let me now let me be we, to back up for those folks that may grow up and not have a mom because of whatever situation. I don't want to take anything away from someone who grew up with just a father because that's not to say that you can't get that type of security as well. But but we're saying in this context, if that relationship does exist, that is a huge footprint that is left by the mother. Exactly. So just exactly. want to clarify that. I don't, yes, I don't want to take less. anything away from families that are father run households right and again we're just speaking from our perspective right and we're just speaking from a point of research this mm -hmm. isn't going to apply to everybody it's not one Correct. shoe fits all it's just or one size fits all this is if you are in this situation mm -hmm. and again you could be coming from a parent uh, a single parent home where you were raised by just your father right um but you might be a woman who's going to have a child or has a child and these are some tools and tips or things that you could be aware of and mindful of as you, you know, maneuver the relationship with your child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hearing, oh, hearing, having the right amount of personal authority. And this mm -hmm. is important. Nurturing, if the, the impact can be nurturing and supportive. If a mother um, is sensitive to her son's needs to take care of his own body and be curious about that. Mm -hmm. And that means your son is 10. He should be able to bathe himself if he wants. He should, like, should. You shouldn't still be. Let him have personal authority over himself. Provide let instruction. Him dress himself. Right. Provide, Provide instruction. instruction. But allow him to bathe himself and dress himself and groom himself. Mm -hmm. And right? give choices. And, and let him. Let's see how he does. After you've right. given a. If you. Hopefully if you've been able to give a routine for to your son. Right. Hopefully, if you are able to, because that he can ding, be able to do that. Yes, because ding, 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 key word here, boundaries. Yes. It provides a space for boundaries. Right. You are then are teaching him about mm. boundaries mm -hmm. so that he can create them for himself and yes. respect the boundaries that other people may set for themselves. Yes, you don't okay? want to sit, have your son grown, sitting on the bed waiting for his wife to dress him. Because there are some men out there that, that exactly. are like, that, Exactly. I've heard stories. <laughs> yes, it happens. <laughs> I've heard stories, okay? So, you know, just allow him to have ownership over his body and mm -hmm. let him know that it's it's his own. Mm -hmm. Because I think if you do that, there's ways that you can emasculate a man yes. by making him think that he has no authority over At his all. own body. And then that creates other issues. Mm. Okay. We that they're not even issue. aware of sometimes so no, later in life. No, no, Um, Offering a model of separation that allows the son to have his own family. Mm. And this actually goes in conjunction with um, the operating in codependent ways and ability to manage emotional dependency needs with the daughter. So the hardest thing that mothers do, and I hear this, especially when it comes to their sons, is... The mother has to set the tone for how sons separate, for how the son separates from the mom and how the son comes back together mm -hmm. or separates and moves on in life. Mm. So if you are creating an environment of anxiety and discomfort about separation and you make it seem like you don't cope well when your son is not there. And we're talking about even from a young age, you don't want him to go like, yes, we all know sleepovers for a lot of us causes anxiety and discomfort. And that I ain't taking away from that because I don't know if Charlie ever going to be able to spend the night over somebody's house. Mm -hmm. But but if you're somebody who is in constant contact with that, that right. son, he's taught that separation from the mother creates bad feelings for mommy. 
Mm. And it's my fault, so I'm not going to separate from mommy again. Mm. That does not set up a good situation for later in life. Because when he that, gets married, there's going to be conflict. If he's able to. There's going to be a lot of conflict. If a he's lo- able exactly. To. If he is able to. But and if then he that's, does, there's because mm. leave and cleave, he ain't going to be able to do that. At all. That's what the Bible say, okay? Yeah. Leave and cleave. So when you have this, when you create a situation like that at a young age, it's creating a man who's unable to to separate himself from his mother, mm-hmm. right? If any time you show irritation or annoyance when he leaves, you're doing emotional damage to that mm, man, to that, that boy that then becomes an emotional damaged man. Man. Okay. And then he could in turn emotionally damage another person. Right. If you're crying and like, oh, please don't leave. Why do you have oh, to leave right now, son? I don't want you to go. Then, we all understand that happens, but. Right. Or here's a, here is the, the opposite way. We're looking at it from mm. one perspective. What if your son has anxiety and fear about the separation and you shut him off? Oh, you don't be crying. Stop crying. You're going to be mm-hmm. all right. Just go ahead and go 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 over your grandparents' house. Or go say your nothing. House. Or sh- be cold. Right. You know what you're teaching him? To be a closed off man who's cut off from feelings. Mm-hmm. Suck it up. Move on. Deal with it. You a man. You a man. Big boys don't cry. All that stuff is some BS. That's some bullshit. I have, I, that, has, that narrative has damaged so many men, which in turn has damaged so many women and other men in relationships with the whole false uh, bravado, machismo, men don't cry. Suck, that is... And that's you're, what you're hampering that's what them. Right, you are. And let's not, you know, again, we're not bashing mamas because mm-hmm. that's not what we're about. No. We're just providing the context so that you understand how your behavior can impact your child. And then that child becomes an adult that has to then mm-hmm. interact with another adult and they cannot work. It's no, they, they, they're not functioning. They're not on, you know, they're not right. on the same page. At all. I'm trying to raise a daughter who is aware of her surroundings, has empathy, understands how to give people grace, has boundaries for herself, Mm -hmm. and respects the boundaries of others. And when she meets somebody's dusty-ass son who is (laughs) closed off from his feelings because his mama did hidden damage, she yes. will understand and see that and mm-hmm. say, no, no, sir. I'm not, yeah, this is not going to happen. You're not going to be. You're going to have to work on that before we can even venture yes. into anything. I need you to fix that. Right. And That's be aware a- that it's actually happening. Because some people, some people, some men have no idea that it's, there, it's even happening, even when it's being brought to their attention. Now they're feeling attacked. Because Hello. of whatever their relationship was, Hello. may have been with their mother, when something is pointed out to them as something to help and grow is seen as a critique, and you're accusing me of X, Y, and Z, because my mother would never talk to me like that, because Hello. the mother may have coddled them and never corrected them and said Hello. everything was okay. Let's speak the truth. Let's <laughs> speak, speak the truth. So science. I'm just saying. And then, and then he doesn't understand how to take that information like this is how you're presenting yourself to mm. me as a per- mm. as another person mm. right this is what your behaviors are presenting and please understand your behaviors have impact and effect and consequences understand that consequences evoke x y and z if you're a mother who allowed or i guess enhanced or or didn't give these parameters or guidance this type of guidance you are setting a whole bunch of people up mm-hmm. a whole bunch of people just a whole bunch of people you are. and it's just mm-mm. Mm-mm. just know that that is not and we understand it's life but there should be an awareness yes that you can be. get you can actually step back and be like to have the wherewithal to step back and be like oh damn i really need to sit back and look at my shit but it's hard and again this is just we see why because some, mm-hmm. some as parents we are molding little yeah. human beings and we just need to make sure that we're doing it to the best of our ability right and That's what you we know have. some men yes men can see how to treat a woman from their father but they also get it from their mother mm-hmm. right how how is that how can a, a mom impact 
how their son treats women later in life. Well, so if, she, dis- if mm-hmm. she demonstrates that men and women are equal in talent, skills, pers- perseverance, by having her own purpose, her own ideas, um, and she engages with her partner on managing family life, the son sees that. He says, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. I like how mm-hmm. my mom is presenting this. I want a woman who is also like this, but I mm-hmm. want to be the type of man that's able to receive that. Yes, right? receive, be able to receive. If they show that they teach their sons that boys are as responsible as girls for keeping the family living space clean and orderly. Mm-hmm. If she's meaningful when she expects her male partner to be involved in her emotional life and that of the children. Mm. That these that are the ways, yeah, that mm-hmm. women can show their sons how to treat women later in life, yeah. Now, sometimes we indulge our sons, we spoil our sons, we make our sons think that they're the best thing since sliced bread. We do mm-hmm. these things, and they, what happens, they get into relationships and they grow to treat their women as slaves and serv- servants who should consider themselves privileged to mm-hmm. be with them to attend to them. My mother did this. Why don't you do this? I'm not your I'm mama. Not your mama. <laughs> I'm not your mama. What do I look like over here trying to be that? your mama. Your mama. A lot of us have, have watched TV shows where we've seen men exhibit this behavior yes. and have conversation with people. And we say, but but that you ain't his mama. What are Auntie, you doing? I, my job is not to raise your son. And my job is not to continue the job that you should have been doing. Hello. That's not that's not what I'm here for. But a lot of women meet men like this and mm. we see where it comes from. It always I hate to say it like that, but it's like, mm. what kind of relationship would you got with your mom? <laughs> Just like men ask, what kind of relationship do you have with your father? Yes. And we want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. The, the way that men look at the woman's relationship with their father is the same way women should look at their spouse's relationship with their Their mother mother. yes the same way exact same amount of critique and depth way it's the same the same okay did we say the same because it's the same yeah just so y'all know just so y'all know okay um Mm. if a woman if a mother demands that her son take care of her emotional needs then Mm. their son grows up to become servile to his woman and guilty when he wants to do the things for himself that should never be the case you, that, so for you, those of you who say that man's so weak he let that woman run all over him mm. he she just tell him what to do what to wear where to go where to work how much he need to make what time he got to leave what time he got to come home what he can drink mm. when he can go to the bathroom when he can shower mm. that is a man you need to look at what happened with his mom right i remember i'm not i saw this show I can't remember what the show was called. And the woman had been on other things. And I think, I don't know if it was like on my strange habits or whatever. I don't know. This woman was married. She dictated to, she was a a miser to the 20th degree. She dictated to her family everything. She had a timer that she ran Mm -hmm. when her husband got in the shower and and told him he had to get out. She she would not let them use like they had to use like the same water for boiling. Oh spaghetti. yes, and they yes, I remember. Then she would pour it back in a jar. Yes, if they and then she yes, wash the um uh, the styrofoam eat. stuff in the dishwasher. Yes, yes the I ranch, saw that. Shit. She would put they would put ranch on salad dressing. If they didn't eat the ranch, she would take this the spoon. Yes, scoop and up put the it ranch, and put it back put it after back if, in the bottle. Spaghetti yes. sauce. Put it yes, back in the I she saw let that. Nothing go to waste. You and couldn't this, put the, the the lights couldn't be on for a certain yes. amount of time a day. And this man, I'm like, okay, he the man. Like, you just gonna why are you putting up with this? And now and they had see. children, and they had children, and they had children. So these children are watching this because why? Because he probably was in a situation where his mother demanded that he that she take care of that he take care of her emotional needs mm-hmm. and so now he's married a woman that he can't even take he can't in his own damn house where he pay bills mm-hmm. he got to take a two minute shower because his wife don't want up the water bill to be run up are you kidding me that is crazy crazy oh my goodness so crazy so I just, mm. just 
if you, mm. you know, again, if you're a mother of a son, yes, just be mindful of how you're interacting with him. And I'll say this. I don't have any friends that I see raising men that aren't raising their sons to be very thoughtful, loving, caring, empathetic individuals that are in tune with their emotions, that let them cry when they want to cry, that let them express their feelings the best way that they know how. And I just hope that we just come to a place where we just mm. let, again, because we know, because we are actually like the first real generation to be like, yeah, I'm going to go to therapy and work out my shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our parents weren't and going I'm gonna to therapy. And I'm going to call you on it. Right. I'm going to call you on it. Our parents aren't going to therapy. We're no. going to therapy. Not, and not talking about it freely. No. Mm. How many of us have had convert that are in therapy have had conversations with our parents? They're like, "What? What you in therapy for? Yep. What's wrong with you? You ain't crazy. You <laughs> ain't. You don't. You, why you? That's for white people. You don't need to be in therapy. Why are you telling people your business? Right. Which, which, uh, what I do to you? I ain't do nothing to you. I, you like, had a good I life. did the best I could with what I had. <laughs> I did the best I could. You try to take me to? I wasn't here for you. I was here for you. You still want to take appreciate what I tried to get. That is not, and it's, it's people have to get through. Yes, and 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 it's still the narrative. It is ongoing. It's still evolving. It's mm -hmm. we're just just now scratching the surface. Yes, just just now. Yes, May is Mental Health Month. Yes. You got to end the stigma on that. But it is just some, it's something that is going to take conversation. It's going to have to take people observing that it's okay. I, if someone goes to therapy, how is that anybody's, how is that anybody's business that they know you're going to therapy? Like, I don't understand. I mean, I understand there's points in your therapy that you have to go and talk to somebody about what you're going through. But it usually takes a little while till you get to that point. But, but here's the thing. We're looking at it in the context, and we're going to speak just from the mother's perspective. Mm -hmm. It always comes back to the mother. Yep. So the mother never wants to hear that you're going to therapy yes. because something she did to you, mm -hmm. or something you per like you perceive mm -hmm. this situation this way, and therefore you have become this way, right? Right. Because we're sitting here as mothers in some capacity, com and we're saying that men and daughters are doing X, Y, and Z, but we're raising these same people. Exactly. So we have to be mindful of these things. We have mm -hmm. to be mindful of our their behaviors. And let me tell you something. Parents, you need to call your children out. Hello. As a mother, Hello. if you see your son not doing mm. something, call mm. his ass out. Mm. Mothers, when you see your daughters doing something, yes. call their asses out. Your children ain't perfect. Yes. It's a process. You're it's learning. Process. You evolve. When you know better, do better. You, yes. And again, there's a difference. Calling them on their bullshit, mm -hmm. respect, and boundaries. Yes. You can do all of that together. Yes. You see your son treating his wife and like and I don't I, I don't sit here. This is what I do not like. I'm gonna say this and some people are gonna be like, well, but that's no. I do not like hearing I didn't raise you to be that way. Well, where the hell did you get it from? Mm. Boom, shakalaka. I'm just saying, I didn't raise her to be that way. Where did she get it from? And I'm not placing blame like, oh, it's all on you. But yes. you have to take a beat, let your pride go, mm -hmm. drop the ego, and say, hmm, At if my point. child is acting like this, where did this behavior come from? Where did, did they admit? learn mm -hmm. this behavior? Mm -hmm. Where? Because it TV? happens. It happens. Okay, they may have learned off the TV, but who turned the TV on? Who put mm -hmm. the power in? In who put the power? Who, who oh. paid for the electricity? To turn the TV I'm on. I'm being facetious, that. but right. you understand my point. Right. Don't be so prideful that you can't take a step back and say, "What did I do that could potentially cause my child to act out this way?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As an adult, take ownership. We're not saying take the blame game. It's just. Take I re responsibility. I remember watching an Inyala. I think it was Inyala. It was mm -hmm. somebody. And the son was abusive. The son was verbally abusive mm. to his children and to his wife. And the mother said, 
I don't know. I don't, I did not raise, I am so disappointed. I did not raise him to be that way. So Yana said, okay, well, let, let, let. it was Yana. She said, okay, okay. Uh, talk to me about uh, some of the things that you went through while raising mm. him. Come to find out she was in relationship after relationship after relationship. And the men that she was with were abusive to mm. her. And she says, well, I never let my son see that. What? I, uh, you don't. You sure? About that? You sure? What about, what about what he heard? All right. And the son said, yes, I remember this situation where my mom was here and she didn't think that I saw and I saw mm. or I heard. And the mm. mother was taken aback. Like, yes, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yes. Children are impressionable. They're sponges. They are. I just love them. And I'm saying this, it almost going to make me emotional. We are living in a time <laughs> We've been living in a time. We've always lived in a time where people do not care about our black bodies. Mm. So the, the 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 best way we can move forward in this, one of the best ways, is to make sure we let our children know that they are loved yes. and that they are special, but that they also respect other. They respect yes, the people other. that they are involved with. Mm. that they have relations with, whether intimate or not. Yes. Respect, Respect their boundaries. Boundary, girl. We about to sink up on that. We about to say jinx on the boundaries. I just raise our children with purpose and intention. Mm -hmm. Intention. And, and understand that we are going to have to release these children into the world on their own. Mm. And what type of child do we want them to be to, what type there. of person do we want them to be and mm -hmm. out there and how can we model our behavior to ensure that they are just good people yes because the world already hates our babies mm. there's so much other stuff that we have to be mindful of that our babies have to deal with before they even leave the hospital before they leave the hospital let me hell, tell you. hell before they get here but we already talked about that in our other episodes and that's and let me tell you I've, I've mentioned this before, and this is, is, is in relation to this, and then we'll move on. I remember when I had Charlie, and she was early, and the nurse, and I'm, I've said this before, the nurse said to me, oh, you don't worry, we have a saying, strong black girls, wimpy white boys. And I thought that this lady was being wrong. I'm like, what the hell? Like, you don't need to use no racial antidote with me, like, to try to make me feel better. Like, what right. the hell are you talking about? Right. And because I'm type A, I'm like, let me grab my goddamn phone to see what this lady talk about. Googles. I used the Googles. <laughs> the Googles. <laughs> the Googles. I typed it in, and that is definitely a phenomenon. It's a very, I don't want to say crude, because that, that's not crude, but it's a very basic way of describing that black girls do exceptionally well as preemies where white boys do not so look at the strength that it takes to be a woman just out the gate mm. and know that you have the power and the ability to birth a nation of beautiful black boys and girls who are emotionally healthy mm. emotionally stable can be functioning adults in healthy functioning relationships yes you have the power to do that because it was your birthright. Mm. So step into that birthright and make sure that we are raising and having healthy relationships with our sons and daughters. That's Hello. all. That's all Hello. I'm going to say. Thank you. And how do we do that? <laughs> what are some ways to look at that? The fostering independence, learning when to let go and allow him to take on the world on his own. You know, we've touched upon that already. It's so crucial that you let him foster his independence and don't undercut the decisions some of the decisions that they make and don't just be behind them coddling them all the time Ooh. Mm. that 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 you can't you got to let them be their own person make their own mind up but also understand that with the choices that they make there are consequences and you cannot come in and swoop in and save them all the time right you have got to let them languish mm. sometimes for their own good, mm -hmm. for their own good. Um, know when to stay out of it. Oh, you know, Lord, this one engraved is across the board. There's TV shows, 
black, white, whatever, there's always shows about this, about the mother-son relationship and how the mother does not know how to stay out of their life <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's just, there's, it's in cartoons. It's just, I mean, it's everywhere. It's, it's so pervasive. It's so prominent. You know, it, 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 it's tricky because it can come off that if you, if you don't know when to stay out of it, it can come off as overbearing or it can come off as you provide good counsel and you back off. I mean, you see, like you said, you see the TV shows, you see it being exhibited in a comedic way. Like if you yep. watch Blackish, mm-hmm. <laughs> <'Cause laughs> Ruby stay up in Bo and Dre's. <laughs> Just like she did in Think Like a Man. <laughs> she stays in the mix and be Always. giving Bo the business. And it's funny, yes. but it's not in real life. Right. Let's, let's just say that in real life, th- it ain't that hilarious. Right. When people say they want a mother-in-law suite and, other, and the, the spouse either or could be like, oh, Lord. That's re- <laughs> like That reverberates with people. You don't hear people saying, oh, I want a father-in-law suite, and people get out of sorts. Yeah, why don't people say they want father-in-law suite? It's always a mother-in-law suite. It's always suite. a mother-in-law suite. Because we're expected to take care yes, of our mothers. and there it goes back to that. So it goes all the it goes back to that. So think about it. People oh. build their, their houses and, you know, lay their life out for that. So think about that and how those relationships manifest. But it is, I will say this. Mothers are expected to take care of their, I mean, son, daughters are expected to take care of their parents. Sons are expected to take care of their mama. Uh, <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Daughters are expected to take care of her parents. Sons are expected to take care of their mothers. I've never heard somebody say, I can take care of pops. It's always, I have to make sure mama good. Mm-hmm. And I, there's a lot of different reasons why. We can get into why that is, mm-hmm. but on the surface, mamas are supposed to take care of, of sons are supposed to take care of their mama, right? But in that, the mama need to learn how to stay out of it. Mm-hmm. And I, what I mean by that is, of course, you don't want your son to be in this toxic relationship and you don't say anything, but you ain't got to interject every other, let that man run his household yes. and have that relationship with his woman. The way that he needs to have the relationship with that woman. Mm -hmm. Because you interjecting ain't going to do nothing but cause a lot of chaos, confusion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be helpful, sometimes not so much. Right. And if you raise your son right, then you should know that the woman or partner that he is involved with has to have some redeeming qualities. And you, as the mother, needs to try to see the good he sees in his significant other. Hello, yes. Try to see it through don't their try eyes. To, don't come over overbearing, because that yes. ain't... Or, or then come becoming passive-aggressive. Oh, mm. that That's even... Mm. I think that that right there can be that much more destructive because you act like you're you're okay with their choice, your son's choice. Where who, whoever your son's partner choice may be, you say you're okay with it, but at the same time, you, you say in some passive-aggressive mess. That is clearly reverberating in the household. So it's just not worth. It's no. Um, you know, help him to build strong relationships with others. You know, it, his relationship with you is going to have a huge impact, as we have said before, with how he interacts with other important people in his life. Nurture his relationship with his father. Encourage mm. friendships. That one right there is so key. You know, whatever the the construct of the. the I know it's very different. It's a vast type of unique relationship styles between mothers and fathers and how you um, set your child up or engage your child with their fathers. But it's so important to encourage that relationship, encourage that time, encourage that time to be spent with their fathers, encourage those conversations. It is just as important and formative uh, as as um, and impactful in their formative years as your time is with them. My in my situation, we always had time. I'm the, I would say my mom probably would say I'm a daddy's girl, but there are certain things that my dad and I would do. Like we put put stuff together. Or I I like to you know put models together. I paint. I you know I'm a tinker. That's and that was something that my dad and I do. That's our our time that we spent together. That my mother encouraged. 
you know, that's to build those bonds. There's different things that you can can try to encourage. And I know um, in this situation, I mean, it may not be resonating with single mothers that don't have relationships with the son, with their fathers, um, the son's fathers. But take this just in the context of it still is important if it's possible to have a relationship with that, to, to encourage a relationship that could be healthy to help build that young man into being a man later in life. And it's just something to, 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 to think about and consider. Instead of leaving all the talk about how to treat their partner, give him your own perspective of what they, of what you may have looked for in a partner while you were getting, you know, going through life hmm. and your choices, your mistakes. Um, you're like, you know, that worked. You know, I tried this route and I said, you know what? And that's fine because we all figure out that's how we grow. That's how you figure out what you like, what you don't like. You know what? This this quirkiness I can live with, this little part, no, this isn't going to work for me. But Would that you... is good. You mm -hmm. need to talk to him about... Yes. It's important to talk to your, your child, period, about yes. relationships. But it is good to talk to your son because we, as mothers, we always talk to our daughters. Mm. You want, like... Yes. And then we sons don't know how to react to what we just call our daughters. And you don't tell your son nothing. I mean, right. have the conversation about when I was a woman... When I was a woman, sorry. When I was your age and I was single, <laughs> I was right. looking for a man who came to the table with, with X, Y, and that. Z. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a man who treated me like this. Mm -hmm. And so when you're approaching a woman and you want her to be, mm -hmm. you know, open to a relationship with you, or if you're a partner, who whatever it is, when you're approaching a partner, about a potential partnership, mm -hmm. make sure you understand what you are offering mm -hmm. and, and make sure that it is what that person would like to receive. True. And acknowledge if you've made mistakes. Right. And that's say You may have seen, growing up, you may have seen me as your mother in this situation. And I realize this may not have been the best situation for you. Hello, and I, hello. And I don't want you to it, emulate it. this. Speak it. Because the opposite. Cause, hey, yes. Speak yes. It. Please don't take it and go with it this way. Because I realize this is not the way I want to model your behavior to go forward. You know, have those conversations so they understand. And this one, I think, is so... Th learn to apologize. Teach your child to learn to, to apologize, to understand what that means. Learn how to say you're sorry and acknowledge when things go left. If they've made an error in a relationship to build, that's part of building relationships. You can't keep going along with it and never say you're sorry because but it's going to build resentment. But it is. in the context, but it's a part of being in a relationship that you say, you telling, telling your child, look, I'm sorry, I did this. I was an example that I did X, Y, and Z and it probably wasn't good for you. And understand that it's okay for you to do that as well. It, it, it helps build a secure person to understand I was wrong, my bad. This is how I'm going to take ownership as a person, as a man, and move forward. And at the end, of the, you, your child is not your friend. Y'all can't be like chumming it up all the time. Wait till they're older in life to try to do that. Because y'all, as in um, growing up, my mama says, me and you is not size. Me and you are not size. We're not the same person. We're not the same age. But to communicate those things to your son, to understand how what elements are important in relationship building, mm -hmm. and and that's part of it going forward for other relationships that right. they interact with is key. Because who Lord, and don't try to change him. I Once think this they is get good. There, the, don't don't. I mean, you, I, you've helped mold him, but don't try to change him. And that's the thing. Let accept who your your son is. I mean, of course, you want to accept who your um, child is period mm -hmm. but I think with sons we try to change their DNA more right in terms of oh you're too sensitive you need to mm. toughen up mm. you need why are you you don't stop being so soft mm. you too emotional mm. Mm. that is I hate hearing that that is like probably one of my biggest pet peeves because People being told that they're too sensitive is a key of manipulation, but that's just what I. That's but my you own. hear it a lot with, and and yes. I know why we do it as black. It's, it's black people in the. It's black a protection. Community. It's a it's a preservation. But 
it actually does not foster a secure adult. Mm -mm. And what I mean by that is a man who is allowed to feel his feelings, mm. understand his feelings, is a healthy man. Mm -hmm. We too often stunt that in boys early. Mm. And then you have a man who's, who can't be empathetic, who doesn't know how to put himself in, in somebody else's shoes, who can't verbally express how he's feeling, so he takes it out in physical ways. Mm. That. So don't try to change him. Your son is who he is. Mm -hmm. Let him be that. Mm -hmm. Foster it. Nurture it. Mm -hmm. Love up on it again. Mm -hmm. And this if he doesn't express himself the way you think he should, if he if he does if he's not verbal, maybe he does it through art, maybe he does it through writing, maybe he does it through playing a sport, but foster it and understand and try to see that that may be his vehicle. Right. Don't put it on him that he need to do it the way you do it. Right. Because that could cause a whole host of other issues of that we kind of talked about earlier. And you know when he when he does figure out what he's doing. Or, or as he's going through life, let him talk and listen. Just, just sometimes they need a sounding board. They just want to just, you know, feel like, you know, what, mom, I can tell you anything. Guess what happened today? At da, 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 da. Or mom, you know, I was talking to this, this guy, girl, whatever. How do you think I should handle it? Now, sometimes you have to just pause and be like, do you really want my advice? Or do you just need a sounding board? Sometimes that's what they need is a sounding board. They really don't need you to impress upon them your whole life thought and, and be overbearing. Maybe they just want to say, mom, you know, help them get their thoughts out. And then even by doing that, you get to see kind of your handiwork of how you were able to build your son up to make those decisions, to be thoughtful and be mindful of what decisions they're making with their relationships. So you can kind of see in how his growth has unfolded and in, in how you've been able to raise them. Right. You know, or where are areas that you may need to shore up on. Right. You know, so sometimes you just need to be quiet and <laughs> let him talk so that you can be like, oh, maybe I should have said or shouldn't have said, or maybe I need to help him do this. Or you know what? Maybe I need to back off because my, I am, my, I'm hearing my voice in him too much. Yeah. And that is not fair to him. Yes. Or to whatever he's trying to do in his life. Yes. So sometimes that's why you just need to listen. And the, you know, reminding him don't don't nag. Now, the nagging thing. <laughs> <sighs> so I think it's just interesting the perception of what is considered nagging for certain men. And I think this this Z when I when I when I was seeing this, it just made me think that the relationship that mothers and sons or mother figures have with their sons creating the, the, the framework for what they consider nagging. Mm -hmm. is, is, I never thought how pivotal that is or what the, how tied that is to the mom until I was just like, as we were talking through this. Because if the mom is expressing to the son her thoughts and, and needs and wants or wishes in a particular way, but isn't consistent like five hours a day, six hours a day or something like that, but it's clear with what she wants or needs, that may not be considered, if it's like maybe, oh, by the way, I just wanted to remind you about X, Y, and Z. Okay, fine. But then if there's someone who is telling you something that I'm trying to express to you and they are not hearing you, he may see it as nagging, but that person is speaking their truth. That's not a nag if you're speaking your truth in the sense of, you said you were going to do this. You didn't do X, Y, and Z. Now, I'm not saying you didn't take out the trash, you didn't take out the trash, you didn't take out the trash. I'm not, I'm not talking in that sense. But be, give your son the discernment to understand the difference between she keeps nagging me about taking out the damn trash. No, there's a difference between nagging and accountability. Yes, it, yes. You, you need to teach your son how to take accountability. Yes. And but th you don't need mm -hmm. to be in his ass 24 7 nagging him about yes. teach him the difference there's teach a him difference. The difference 
so that when he gets into a relationship with a woman and the woman is trying or let me not say woman when when he gets into a relationship right mm -hmm. that he doesn't take that his partner forcing him to take accountability for something as nagging yes thank you Div that's, that's what it is yes there's a difference yes yes and yes. i find that in situations where sons don't want to take accountability for something is that the mother mm. never forced them to take accountability mm -hmm. for something and Preach. so the the Can mere the 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 mere Please. mention of you doing what you said you were going to do is nagging oh, you saying a word today that's the difference mm. Well, that's where mm. that's where you have to find the difference. I if I'm that. asking you as your partner mm -hmm. to make your words and your actions match, I'm Hello. asking for accountability. Mm. I'm not at that nagging. That is not nagging. That is no. not nagging. But if you said that you were going to be here for me at this mm. time and you were not here for me at that time, then I need you to take accountability for not being there at that time. And I need you to explain to me why that, why that was. Hmm. That's not a nag. Nope. I'm asking you to be responsible for my feelings mm -hmm. in the situation. That you said you were going to be responsible for. That's why I'm holding you accountable. Because you said. Right. You However, there are women who are demanding and often demeaning mm -hmm. in their uh, and they command right a gentle nudge to remind you to do something is different than a demeaning demanding command that's the other thing mm -hmm. distinction you need to make yes so true so we need to be clear on that mm. hello all but of again that. we're saying all of this and I know it's coming up on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Again, as as mothers, we can birth a nation. Mm, we have birthed a power. nation. We've kept this nation sustained afloat and Correct. sustained. Black women did that. Yes. Yes. So we need to be mindful of when we bring these little humans into the world, that we are fostering healthy, mm. protective relationships with yes. them so that they go out into this world and know that they are loved regardless of what society is telling them and yes. they are able to express that love and those feelings to others hello because we all we got hello that's it and if i'm a mama raising a toxic bringing up a daughter in a toxic environment mm. and you a mother raising your son in a toxic environment mm. and these two people meet now they two toxic people trying to create another toxic situation hey, you know what that is that's a housewife <laughs> show that's what that is that is what you see on that TV. is a generational curse that's yes. what that is and, and we and we, we break into all gen generational curses in 2021 mm. you got Say to that. we Say have that. to we have to, and this is the way to look at our relationships with our children and see where we can do better mm. and how we can do better. And I'm sorry, mamas and daddies of of, of Generation X, but y'all did this. <laughs> mm -hmm. You did what you what? could, did what you, yes, did what you but had. But your parents did the same thing to you. Yeah. It's, and it's... so at some point, somebody has to say, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that to my child. Here's where the buck stops. It ends with me. Yep. If she gonna be on, if Charlie gonna be in the therapist's office every Tuesday and Thursday, it gotta be something else other than my mommy did this to me, my daddy did this, and mm -hmm. I'm being, I, again, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Yeah. I know so many friends who are in therapy, and it's over some shit that they didn't resolve for in their childhood mm. with their interactions with the parents. Yes. It is, I'm being honest. Let's be real and transparent. How many, raise your hand if you listen to this. How many mm. y'all in therapy right now because of some unresolved shit between your mama or your daddy or both? <laughs> My hands <laughs> raised. Ned's <laughs> hands raised. How many? It's many of us. It's, it's life. It's, it's real life. People. It happens. It's life. It's, it's, 
it, it's not TV. This is no. not TV. And raise your hand. How many of you have children and you don't want them to go through the same thing? Mm, and it's not that. that. And what I'm saying is, let's just because. And I'm I, I'm trying to say this as diplomatically as possible and as sensitive as possible. You don't have to be abused or come from a physically mm, abusive yes. family and childhood to have experienced mm -hmm. some type of trauma or toxic uh, uh, energy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. To have to go to therapy and work that shit out. Because everybody receives don't. it differently. People everybody process it differently. it differently. So what may impact you and have a lasting possible negative or positive effect on you is different what's, than what's going to affect me or Zerisa. Absolutely. I'm I'm transparent. Y'all know I'm transparent. I'm going to tell you, my relationship with my mother messed me up. <laughs> it did. It created a lot of bad experiences in my 20s and my early 30s. Mm. My relationship with my mother. And I don't have a mother here in the physical to repair that relationship with. So from my perspective, if you have a mother who's still here and you have some some shit you need to work out, work it out. Mm -hmm. If you're a mother and you have some shit with your children right now that you need to work, work it out. Because mm -hmm. when they're gone, you don't have that opportunity to do it. And, may, and if you just working through, take those moments, enjoy them and be present. And if it's a process, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. And it's not going to work itself. You know, it, it, it's, it's understand also where they are coming from and what right. kind of relationship they may have had with their mothers. And they, they are working with they, what they got and they don't know what to do with that. They don't. They don't. So give them grace. You have to. And I'll say, the thing that helped me come to resolution is me having my own child and realizing, again, my mother was 22 when she had me. There are a lot of you who are listening that have um, children who are in college now and you were mm -hmm. doing the best that you could and you may have made some mistakes and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It is. Because that's life. Right. That's life. Um, but let's go ahead and end here because my battery's telling me that I ain't got 10% left and it's <laughs> like <in> sleep mode. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break and really come right back with the last tip of the day. Right. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> When you are a mother, you are never really alone in your thoughts. A mother always has to think twice, once for herself and once for her child. And that is attributed to Sophia Loren. I ain't got no other words because I said enough. And like I said, this computer about to <laughs> say, F you and your podcast is shut off. <laughs> so thank y'all for joining us this week on Sympathy with that and Z. As you know, you can follow us on Instagram, Sipping Tea, underscore Nat and Z, under, uh, underscore pod. And on Facebook, at Sipping Tea, Nat and Z. Get information on upcoming podcasts, topics, guests, and news. Thank you, as always. We appreciate each and every one of you for listening. And keep an eye out for our next episode, where we talk about self-esteem, self-confidence, and the outside noise that we probably outside. have. Outside. 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 <laughs> that may have been fun and enjoy your mother's day celebrate the mother figures the aunties all of that in your life for this month going forward happy mother's day y'all toodles <laughs>